Well, Justin Tucker was a do-everything kicker for the Longhorns over the course of his career. Now he's just hoping to do at least one thing in the NFL. The draft is less than two weeks away. Tucker's confident that even if his name is not called, he'll still get a shot to play on Sundays. Tucker is his own kicking coach, and kickers lead a relatively lonely life. More on that in a moment as he continues to work out at the stadium and on his own. The former Westlake Chaparral was the place kicker for two years. Also, of course, a punter for the Longhorns. He also was a rugby punter, the former wide receiver at Westlake High, though likes to think of himself as a football player and not just a kicker. No matter what, though, he'll always be remembered for that kick against the Aggies to end their conference rivalry. I had a chance to talk to Tucker about his efforts heading into training and the draft in two weeks. It's all kind of up to me. It's self-driven. So I'll come out several times a week, uh, make sure like I, that I focus on quality over quantity. I'll hit 15 balls a day. Uh, you know, that's fuel goals. And I'll, I'll throw in some punts just to stay fresh in case somebody wants to see me do that. But um, yeah, I've just been working out on my own. I'll go lift uh, several times a week as well. And uh, all day, really just right down the middle. just trying to stay fresh in the event that I get called up and somebody wants me to, you know, work out on a moment's notice. Kickers and punters, I guess, by nature are kind of lonely creatures. Has this been a, a lonely process seeing what other guys are going through with with kind of their setup? I don't know if I'd call it lonely. It's just uh, it's just part of the business. Um, I, I know that being a kicker, it's. You know the the chances of being drafted in the you know in the higher rounds is you know very very minimal unless you're a guy like you know I guess the most the most recent to you know my memory serves me correctly is Janikowski was uh, picked up in the first round I guess right around the turn of you know Y2K but um, you know I, I, yeah I wouldn't call it a lonely process it's it's just uh, a little bit more maybe it's a, a little bit tougher road to go about go about doing things. Um, but not, not necessarily lonely, more, more like uh, you know, a little bit more specific or focused. I'm just working out on my own, and uh, at this point, it's not even a fine-tuning thing. It's just a maximizing thing. So I'm, uh, I'm hitting the ball great right now. Sixty-five, baby. And I've hit up to 75 while I've been training. So it's really just a matter of putting all the pieces together at this point. Is that the key, the, the leg strength, or there's got to be more to it than, than just how far you can kick it, right? Yeah, you definitely got to have all the tricks up in the bag. I mean, you know, not necessarily tricks when you're talking about stuff as black and white as kicking field goals. Um, what, what I believe scouts and coaches will want to see is consistency uh, from 50 and in. And it's a luxury if you have a kicker who has a big leg. Um, kickoffs, they want to see you hit a high ball. They want to see you hit one, you know, or they want to see you hit them consistently into the end zone. He's a guy that, that made tough kicks throughout his career. Uh, he can rugby punt, he can regular punt, and he does a tremendous job kicking off. We probably used him too much this year and wore him out because he's so good and he's so competitive and he wanted to do everything. But uh, because he can do everything needed on a professional football team, uh, we think he, he should be a high priority for them. Coaches seem to be more fickle about kickers than anyone. That, that could benefit because they're constantly looking, but that's got to be the, the tough part, looking down the road, realizing that it's a tough gig. They don't give you as much leeway as other players. Yeah, that's, that's certainly true. Uh, I mean, we've seen it over the last several years uh, in, in the pros and in the college level is, you know, like I just said a minute ago, everything about kicking fuel goals is black and white. It's either it's good or it's not. Um, and it's the one position in football where it really is that simple. Um, so, yeah, it is, it is kind of the unfortunate duality of the position, but that's also something that any good kicker will realize and embrace is, you know, once you, once you have, a, you know, your fundamentals and you have your technique and you're confident in your abilities like I, I know I am, um, you know, it just, it just it makes it easier to kind of store all of that information in the back of your mind as opposed to thinking about it while you're about to kick the ball. Last thing you want to do when you're about to kick the ball is say to, my, say to yourself, um, Man, I hope I don't miss because of this, this, or that. And no matter what else you do, you've always got that kick in College Station. How often do you replay that in your head and when your head hits the pillow? Tucker's kick is up. Justin's kick is good! It's good! 
it's, it's hard not to, but I just at this point right now, I, I'm I'm not worried about that. You know, I'm I'm worried about moving forward and uh, kicking. You know, the next the, the next ball is the most important one, and the next ball is the hardest one to make. The way I look at it is, there are 32 kickers, there are 32 spots in the NFL for a place kicker or a kickoff guy, and. Uh, out of the 32 teams last year, 30 of them had been cut at some point in their career. Uh, the two exceptions are the guys who were rookies last year, uh, Alex Henry in Philly and then Dan Bailey in Dallas. Um, but the way I see it is if 30 out of 32 kickers in a given season uh, had been cut at some point in their career, some of them multiple times. Um, it just makes you hungrier, and I think I think teams know that too. I think scouts, coaches know that, um, and maybe that's you know that's just part of it is feeling you out and making sure that you have what it takes before they sign you on to the 53-man roster. They want to make sure that you, you're still hungry, and I definitely am. I always end every day on a positive note. This is going to be a 48-yarder from the right hash. Three seconds, no timeout, score 21-20. Bad guys, this one's for all the marbles. Boom. <laughs>